everyone, we are from Group 9. My name is Hinanti and today we are going to present to you on Experiment 2, Batch Liquid Creator. At first, let us look at what is this experiment talking about. As stated in the title, Batch Creator is used in this experiment. We can describe it as a vessel in which chemicals are placed to react. Batch reactors are normally used in small-scale laboratories set up to study the kinetic of chemical reactions. It is used for a variety of process operations. For example, batch distillation, crystallization, liquid-liquid extraction, product mixing, solid dissolution, chemical reaction like saponification as well as polymerization. One of the advantages of using batch reactor is high conversion, which products can be obtained by leaving the reactor in the reactor for long periods of time. It is flexible in terms of operation, which same reactor can produce one product at a time. Also, it is easy to clean. However, it has some drawbacks like causing high labor maintenance and less effective in larger production. In this experiment, we shall be able to conduct a well-known saponification reaction between ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide. Therefore, in the end of this experiment, four objectives should be achieved. Firstly, to prepare the calibration curve of conversion versus conductivity. Second, to study on the batch saponification reaction of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide. Third, to determine the red constant and overall order of saponification. And lastly, to study the effect of oxidation on the rate of dissolution of ammonium nitrate in water. In order to fulfill these four objectives, the variation of a property of reaction mixture is observed as the reaction progresses. Data collected usually consists of changes in variables such as concentration of a component, temperature, and physical properties like electrical conductivity. Moving on to the theory part, during the batch reaction, there are no feed or acid strings, so we can say rate of A produced with thin volume element is equal to the rate of A accumulated with thin volume element, and rate of reaction of component A is equal to moles of A which appear by reaction over unit volume times unit time which is equal to 1 over V times DNA over DT. After rearrange the equation, our mole balance will be negative RA V0 is equal to Na0 DSA over DT. According to the right law, negative RA is equal to KCA power of alpha, which alpha is depends on which order you are going to use. For example, for the first order, the alpha will be 1 and CA is equal to CA0 times bracket of 1 over S. Now we need to rearrange our mole balance, which we move V0 to the right hand side. Therefore, the equation will become negative RA is equal to NA0 over V0 times DSA over DT. Since NA0 over V0 is equal to CA0, so negative RA is equal to CA0 times DSA over DT. Next, we can substitute rate law into the new form of the equation. For the first order, the rate law is equal to KCA. Now, the equation is KCA is equal to CA0 times DSA over DT. After rearranging and differentiate, we will get the equation like KT is equal to negative ln 1 over S. Same method is applied to zero law and second law. Now we move to the result parts. 
for the experiment A, which is about batch saponification reaction of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide. The aim of this experiment A is to determine the order of the reaction and the rate constant K. For the result, we plot three order of graph, which is the zero order, first order, and second order. For zero order graph, the graph is between concentration versus time. The graph for 50 RPM, 100 RPM, and 200 RPM at first minute is increasing. And when it reaches 12 minutes, it also increasing but slightly constant. The first order graph is between ln 1 over 1 minus x versus time. For 50 RPM, the graph is increasing. For 100 RPM, the graph is also increasing. And for the 200 RPM, it increasing and after 30 minutes, it reach linear graph. Now, we move to the second order graph. The second order graph is between x over c a naught 1 minus x versus time. The graph is clearly shown that it is not linear graph. In this experiment A, the order of the saponification reaction is a first order reaction. By based on the three graph obtained, the graph that attain the best speed which is linear is the first order graph. According to our graph of first order, the best speed would be the highest RPM which is 200 RPM. Now, we move to on how to find the rate reaction rate constant from this experiment. The reaction rate constant from this experiment can be found by finding the slope of 50 RPM, 100 RPM and 200 RPM. Reaction rate is basically measure of the change in concentration of the disappearance of reactants per unit time. In this first order graph, we obtain reaction rate constant for 50 RPM is 0.3931, for 100 RPM is 0.6013, and for 200 RPM is 0.1348 per minute. Based on the theory, the highest rotation per minute will give the highest reaction rate constant. But in our result, we got 100 RPM as the highest reaction rate constant which is definitely different from theory. This is because maybe due to some error during the experiment. Next, I will talk about the second part of the experiment, that is experiment C. This experiment is about the effect of agitation on rate of dissolution of ammonium nitrate in water. The first objective of the experiment is to compare the curve temperature versus time for the difference thermal speed. And the second objective is to make analysis of the temperature considering scenarios of heat transfer by convection and conduction. To conduct the experiment, we dissolve ammonium nitrate into the water with different thermal speed and record the changes in temperature over a period of time. Let us look at the graph plotted. We can observe that at 50 RPM, which is the yellow line, the initial temperature is at 33.8 degrees centigrade. The temperature is decreasing until 3.5 minutes and it keeps fluctuating until it reaches equilibrium at 5.5 minutes. The equilibrium temperature is 31.8 degrees centigrade. For 100 RPM, which is the blue line, the initial temperature is 34.7 degrees centigrade and it decreasing until 3.5 minutes. It increased a bit at 4 minutes and it reached equilibrium at 4.5 minutes. The equilibrium temperature is at 32.5 degrees centigrade. Lastly, for 150 RPM, which is the red line, the temperature begins at 34 degrees centigrade and the temperature decreased until it reached 32.3 degrees centigrade. The temperature reached equilibrium at time equal to 3 minutes. Moving to the discussion part of the experiment C. As I mentioned earlier, we were studying the effect of agitation on the rate of dissolution of ammonium nitrate in the water. From the ground, we can see that the highest RPM has faster time to reach equilibrium temperature and lowest RPM has longer time to reach equilibrium temperature. Their theory states that 
the faster the storage speed, the faster the rate of dissolution. We can prove this by comparing the slope of the graph plotted. For 50 RPM, the slope is negative 0.2567 degrees C per minute. For 100 RPM, the slope is 0.44 degrees C per minute. And for 150 RPM, the slope is negative 0.4881 degrees C per minute. Comparing the absolute value of the slope 150 RPM has the highest rate of dissolution and 50 RPM has the lowest rate of dissolution. This is because more RPM means more agitation that increase the rate of dissolution. Generally, we can see from the result of the experiment that the temperature is decreasing with time. The reason is dissolution of ammonium nitrate in water is an endothermic reaction. As we know, endothermic reaction absorb heat that decrease the temperature of the solution. Moving on to the weakness of experiment. Firstly, during the experiment, the water which is used to flush the reactor did not fully drain from the reactor. There is a layer of water at the bottom of the reactor which possibly affect the conductivity and also conversion. Besides that, there is a high probability that a parallax error occurred during the use of measuring cylinder and the beaker, as the graduated marking on a beaker are only approximate. So, a beaker should never be used for accurate volume measuring. Furthermore, there is also an error when recording the conductivity. It happens when we add the sodium hydroxide into the reactor which already contain ethyl acetate. However, we have yet to start recording the conductivity. Next is the proposal method to improve the quality of experiment. When cleansing the reactor, a suction pump should be used to completely drain out the water from the batch reactor. Besides, when measuring the cylinder, the eye must be perpendicular to the reading scale to avoid parallax error. In order to reduce as much human errors as possible, we should automate most of the procedure such as input of reactants and also the measuring of the time of the reaction to increase the accuracy of the experiment. Having an automated fit inlet system into the reactor would eliminate the possibility of affecting the conductivity of the reactants. Lastly, repeat the experiment for several times to get the average values in order to get more accurate results. In conclusions for experiment A, in the batch liquid reactor, the saponification of ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide, it is maintained and regulated at different stereo speeds. In this experiment, the concentration of the reactants was constant. From our findings, it is concluded that the saponification reaction is a first order reaction. For conclusions in experiment C, Experiment C is to study the effect of agitation on the rate of dissolution of ammonium nitrate in the water. The experiment is conducted at different stereo speeds and the mass of the ammonium nitrate was constant. It is 50 gram. From our findings, it is concluded that the higher the agitation, the faster the rate of dissolution of ammonium nitrate in the water.